So going into this week, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to guess when that uh, blow off top is going to be, but you have to assume it's going to come, you know, in the next couple of days. Usually when you have an exhaustion cycle, the same way we saw in the video. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody's having a wonderful, blessed, healthy, happy, uh, fun weekend. Because again, at the end of the day, it's our lives. Make them the best that they could possibly be and always try to uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, if you are brand new to uh, the channel, welcome aboard. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, all those good stuff, you know, come aboard and, you know, share this journey with us of unbiased uh, technical analysis via price action uh, versus opinion. So that's that. So let's get into the market. So uh, some numbers uh, heading into the week. Uh, NASDAQ 100 with the QQQs uh, up 33% for the year. Why is that significant? Because we were down uh, 31% in 2022. And so far, six months in, we've erased uh, all of last year's uh, losses. Uh, the SPY, let's just use the SPY as a case study, uh, is up 20% uh, from the October lows. Very, very impressive. Uh, IWM recently um, has had a great, great breakout. Phenomenal breakout. Congratulations for all you guys who caught it. This was one of the better moves I can remember uh, in the index, considering that the market, the majority of the market rested uh, this week uh, was super, super impressive. If you look at the Dow, uh, look at the Dow, it's trailing a little bit compared to our, everybody else, but still very, very positive. Uh, you have 30 stocks making up the index, which is really a microscopic uh, type of view of the market. Again, I like to always look at the broader uh, indexes, the S&P 500 uh, that notched its fourth consecutive uh, gains. Uh, in a row, the NASDAQ has been powering up and the IWM has been uh, rallying for the last week coming out of a, a three-month channel, which basically, again, puts the the argument to uh, bed that this market was being fueled uh, by only five stocks, which is absolutely ridiculous. And you can see, go through chart by chart by chart. Again, there's 2,000 names in the IWM. There's 500 names uh, in the SPY and there's 100 names in the NASDAQ 100. So as far as I understand, um, as far as I understand, again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but that's 2,600, you know, 2,600 components that are taking the market higher. As far as I know, carry the one. That might be more than five stocks taking the market up. So it's really, really an incredible market ride. Um, the, the market has been incredible. It's shown incredible action, whether you're trading small mid cap or uh, large mega cap names like I do. Uh, there's something there for everyone. And the question is, what happens next, right? Um, you know, it, the most important thing I, I do every single day is have a contingency, contingency plan because I've been talking about this uh, nonstop for the last couple of weeks. We, we just don't know when the merry-go-round is going to stop. We just don't. And, and I know every single day uh, it sounds like a broken record, but that's the date. That's that one day that you get caught slipping, that you just sit there and saying everything is okay, I can just keep on buying and keep on buying. And the next thing you know, you know, you're 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 upside down. And and here was a perfect example of that uh two days ago. We started talking about the a little bit of an exhaustion cycle. And what happened, you know, what happened in the middle of the week? We finally broke below the five day moving average, very, very aggressive, started breaking below the previous day's low, and we traded down to the 10 day moving average. The most impressive part, what I thought. Uh, of the week was, you know, if you guys remember Wednesday going into Thursday's video, because we had such a, such an aggressive engulfing candle, I was ready for the bottom of the channel. So if that bottom of the channel broke, I was ready for it. Because again, uh, you, you say to yourself, you know, you, the market could only rally based on based on technical of, of, of emotional aggression. If you have an emotional aggression type of scenario that gasses out and goes to the next uh, demand zone, well, if the following day would have confirmed we would have went lower. The problem is it didn't. And it really shows you the testament of how strong uh, this market is. But you start looking a little bit deeper. And that, that's the most important part. You, you want to be uh, a really good uh, money manager first when you come to when, when it comes to a linear regression type of market. And it keeps on going and going and going uh, versus an alpha hunter. And I've always said 
Uh, and it, even the most extreme bullish market, I've always said lead with your shield, uh, not with your chin, because you have so many stocks that are up in orbit, you can always get that pull. And, and again, this is a perfect example of a stock doing so. If you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, NVIDIA had one of the most marvelous runs I could remember in a very, very long time. We talked about uh, the inverted hammer, right, which was, which was a sell signal. We don't know how aggressive the sell signal was going to be, but it turned out the, the inverted hammer turned into a, a price point, right? A price point that, you know, started taking the stock down. No matter what you think about the stock long term, you can't deny the day-to-day -day activity of what happened uh, after this inverted hammer. And you, you know, you're talking about a stock that had this 100-point run-up, 130-point run-up in a matter of three, four days. And, you know, it's gone from 420 uh, as low as the 373. You know, 50 points uh, in about five, six sessions is kind of a big deal. And that's kind of what we want to avoid, right? Or excuse me, if you're an investor, you kind of want to avoid taking those longer moves and just kind of just sit there and, and, and pretend that it, it can't happen to your stock. And that's what I always prepare for. And, and again, the market has been great. So until my until my theory gets confirmed, I don't guess, right? And that's the first thing we always uh, tell our traders and uh, you know try to convey that message. We never guess when that top is going to come in. You just don't. That's the most expensive way to get run over in your account. Just ask anybody who's been trying to short the market. Uh, it just since the January, it's realistically since the January, uh, I believe it was 11th or 12th that we reclaimed the 50-day moving average on the QQQs. If you've been trying to pick a top, you've been you've been absolutely destroyed. Guys, here's the most basic rule. And I, I, I've said this for years and years and years, and um, it, it's super important to kind of write this down. If, if you got nothing uh, out of any of my videos or anything that I've ever said or any chart that I posted, just listen to the most basic thing about technical analysis, okay? For a stock to go higher, okay? For any stock to go higher, I don't care if it's Amazon, Tesla, or some two cent stock. It has to start building. And what I mean by building, the price action has to occur above the previous day's channel, okay? That's the only way a stock can go higher. Um, only way a stock can go lower if the price action starts building, right? If, if bears start building and taking over control of the previous day's low and start building a new ceiling below there. That's the only way a stock can go lower. So the idea that you're, you're shorting a stock because it keeps on going higher because the market goes higher. It's, it's, it's fool's gold because you're hoping today is the highs. You know, you're, you're, you're guessing today is the highs. You're hoping this is the exhaustion cycle and the tops out later. But the reality is hope is not a strategy. A strategy is a strategy. A process is, is your strategy. And the point is until a stock starts taking out the previous day's low, there's absolutely no way a stock can go lower. So it's a very, very expensive way to try to be right, to try to uh, to try to guess where future prices are going to hold. The key is, folks, if you if you're bullish, let your stock start building above the previous day's channel. If you're bearish, watch the previous day's lows. If they start building the previous day's lows, there's a, there's a high probability the stock will go in that direction. It's the easiest way not to cause yourself a lot of he headaches, a lot of sleepless nights, hoping and praying that, that whatever stock you're looking at is going to finally, uh, you know, gas out and crash. So for example, you know, NVIDIA was the best scenario, right? And the video gassed out the next day, it took out the previous the previous day's low, right? And it went lower, right? So here's kind of my segue. So Tesla has been, I, I mean, I, I, I've lost words. This has been probably the, well, definitely the best trade, right? Uh, the best trade, as soon as it, especially as soon as it reclaimed the 50 day moving average, this three week run, has been absolutely amazing, right? But if what have you noticed about the th three th this three week run, right? There was only one area in the whole chart that it took out the previous day's low, right? Just look, look at just look at this chart very very closely. L look at this whole chart, right? There was only one area of the chart that it took out the previous day's low, and because the stock was so strong, it only went down a couple of points to its rising five day support. And that's the point. So anybody who keeps on shorting Tesla, shorting Tesla, shorting Tesla as it's going higher and higher and higher until it takes out the previous day's low and starts building below that low, it's not going to go lower. And that's the most important point. Pay attention to the chart. Pay attention to the price action. And going into this week, I can make a case, the same case that I made with NVIDIA that, hey, it's a little too far and a little too fast. Does that mean Monday... Tesla's going to fall apart and, and go right back down to uh, 228, 230, the five-day moving average? No, it doesn't have to. Monday, it can gap up and still going. The Tuesday, it can gap up and still going. 
But what I am watching for is two things to to, to come into reality. Uh, gravity, right? Gravity, which we know every single stock, no matter how strong it is, gravity will always kick in. And the idea that waiting patiently, not guessing, waiting patiently for Tesla to gas out, lose the previous day's channel. And if it does lose the previous channel, I think gravity plus exhaustion equals a measured potential pullback. It doesn't mean that Tesla will go down to 205, to 203, to 190, to 170 when this whole breakout started. It means we're just looking for a trade and taking advantage of price action, just the same we did on the video. So going into this week, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to guess when that uh, blow off top is going to be, but you have to assume it's going to come, you know, in the next couple of days. Usually when you have an exhaustion cycle, the same way we saw in the video, uh, you're going to probably see Tesla gap up, take out opening range highs, trap, you know, late, late buyers in this whole move, go red, take out the previous day's low, and then, then that could turn into a previous, into a really, really great example of a natural aggressive back test. And if you guys remember that back test on the video, right? That back test on the video uh, was $22, guys. It was a $22, uh, you know, case, it was a $22 case study after exhausted cycle, took out the previous day's low and went to the next channel. So Tesla, I am definitely watching this week. Um, I have at least for, you know, unless, unless it goes sideways for two, three days and shows me it just doesn't want to go down. I really have no interest on this thing for the long side. I, I think the long side of trade uh, for the last three weeks was was enough, right? It, it's like uh, you know, it's like going to a steakhouse, uh, ordering the Caesar salad, ordering uh, ordering uh, you know stuffed mushrooms, ordering um, I don't know, you know shrimp cocktail, getting a, a porterhouse steak, ordering uh, mashed potatoes, vegetables, cream spinach. Uh, all that good stuff, eating dessert. And as the waiter is taking the plate away from you, grab his hand and try to lick the bowl for the last chromosome. That's what you're trying to accomplish if you're going long, literally, right? You know, going long at these levels of Tesla. I love Tesla. I love the stock both ways. And now I think that the long bias trade, at least for the next couple of days, is a little bit tired, is a little bit exhausted. In my opinion, I think the value in the next few days is going to be to the downside. Will it play out that way? We have no idea. What's the worst case scenario? I'm wrong. The downside never comes and I buy stock. Scary, right? Guys, don't be afraid to be wrong. Don't be afraid uh, to show your vulnerability. You're a human being. We're wrong a lot, right? We're, as human beings, we're wrong a lot. The way we choose our spouses, the way we choose our, our, our eating lifestyles, our habits, we're always going to be wrong. The easiest thing to do is, you know, go with your gut. The hardest thing to do is go and sit patiently until your gut gets confirmed by technical price action. And that's exactly uh, what we're looking at. Other than that, uh, if you look at the indexes, uh, IWM continues uh, to, you know, to really do incredibly well playing catch up on the SPX. Again, had a big, big run up uh, Friday, test of the five day. Uh, if you are watching for a potential back test in the IWM, and if you believe the indexes are getting tired, watch the five-day breakdown, right? Don't guess when it's going to happen. Watch the five-day breakdown. If this IWM starts losing 184, especially on the close, then yeah, it's going to back back test to the 10-day moving average. Uh, look at the queues. You know, we have vital points everywhere. You can make a case that the queues got rejected three times at the top of the range. Uh, the longer it keeps on getting rejected at the top of the range, there's a high probability test the 10 day. If you guys remember, we caught that really great move on the queues from the five to the 10 day. So if you are a bear, don't try to guess when the queues are, gro are going to be, you know, start getting hammered. Set an alert, right? 348 is going to be the line in the sand for any potential real move back to, to the downside or at least a couple of two, three day corrections. The Nasdaq's going to need to lose 348. There's there's no other there's no other point of reference. There's no possible way you could get a move down to 330 without the Nasdaq or unless the QQQs lose 348. That's impossible unless you levitate your your account from 354 to 330. Unless we lose the 10 day moving average and the bears reclaim this 348 level, it's never going to happen. So it's be very very important be important about that. Uh, the SPY same thing again. Looks like an exhaustion channel taking place into the upper Bollinger Band. Again, does any of this mean we're going lower Monday? None of this means we're going on Monday. This is just price action that is being discussed. And now I'm formulating an opinion for Monday session. Does it play out that way? Who the hell knows? That's why it's a plan, right? It's not a, a guarantee it's going to play out that way. It's a plan. And unless you have a plan, unless you have key elements, unless you have 
points of reference that you can trade off of. All you're doing is guessing, and nobody wants to guess uh, for a living. For the spies uh, to start going lower, if you believe this market is gassed out, well, the spy is going to need to lose this 426, right? If we could lose 426, and we've held now 426 three times in the last four days, well, that's going to be the, the point of interest. Again, you don't want to short the spies unless they lose 426. It doesn't make any sense to try to guess a top. And that's, again, it's going to keep you uh, absolutely safe. When you look at the other individual names, you'll kind of see some stocks stuck in the middle of the channel. Some stocks are trying to get above their channels. But again, there's not a really clean view of the market. We talked about Tesla. We talked about NVIDIA. Again, getting you know pretty tired as well here, NVIDIA. NVIDIA tried to crack the, the top of the market. And we actually had a great pivot on the video from, uh, from 91 to 97 on on uh, Monday, on Friday. But look, again, it's, it got rejected off this top of the channel here. Now, again, if you want to look at the video and you say, hey, I think there's more downside, wait for this 10-day to get to, to get to confirm. Again, why sit there and try to put on positions if the price action's not near a technical breakdown? It just makes absolutely no choice. Again, guys, may, put yourself in a position of strength, okay? Don't guess, don't anticipate. We're not that smart. Wait for these levels to break. If they break, Price action should follow. If they don't, guess what? The other side of the equation comes into play, and that's the whole point of trading both sides of the market and being prepared on both sides as well. Again, if you look at chart, some charts that look pretty good this week, like look at Meta, right? At least Meta had a really, really big run, came back in, got rejected off the five-day moving average, right? If you're looking for a long bias trade, watch Meta, right? If Meta starts building above the five-day, and again, now it's still three, four dollars away. But if Meta starts building above the five-day, at least you have a point. Don't guess that it's going higher. Let it reclaim the five-day moving average. Uh, look at a name like Amazon, for example, right? Amazon, again, has gotten rejected back-to-back -back days on the five-day. If the stock is going to go lower, again, doesn't it have to lose the 10-day moving average? Don't guess. Again, that's the theme, right, folks? That's the theme of this video. And I said that about 19 times because eventually it's going to sink into your DNA and you realize, well, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't guess. Maybe I shouldn't put myself in a position that I'm, 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 I'm trying to pick and trying to guess the closing price. I'm waiting patiently. And in case you haven't figured this out, if you're trading for a year, 10 years, 20 years, you do a lot of sitting in this business, right? For the six hours of the day, you're probably trading about 15, 20 minutes. Just, to, just put that into perspective, right? Because of the, your, your research from the night before, hopefully, right? And your, 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 your work behind the scenes, you're already putting yourself in a position to succeed. And what you're doing is not clicking the mutton, the mouse every every two seconds. You're waiting for these channels to confirm. So if you break down your trading day, six hours, right? The six, six and a half hours of the trading day, 15, 20 minutes, you're actually trading everything else. You're babysitting your trade. You're doing research. Uh, you're watching option flow and you're getting ready for the next day. But it's so hard, you know, it's so hard uh, to put yourself in a position of strength with patience, and it's so easy to click the mouse. The problem is it's so hard to click the mouse the right way. And this is where, unfortunately, a lot of traders, because of their lack of patience, a lack because of their lack of ability to wait for uh, price action to confirm, unfortunately, that's when they expire before their potential is reached. And that's a very, very sad thing because, again, the only difference between a person trading for 25 years and a person's trading for 25 months is time, right? And time will get you better. It'll make you a better trader, better parent, better spouse, husband, father, wife, all that good stuff. And time will definitely uh, make you a better trader. So we know our lines in the sand going into this week. Uh, on the queues, we are watching the top of the channel to break for more upside. This, you know, 350, seven and a half, 358 level. And to the downside, we're watching 348. So no macro move, no macro opinion will happen in the stock market unless the queues get above 358 or below 348. Everything else is then in between is your research, trying to pick off moves in the middle of the day, finding value, watching option flow, and hopefully be diligent and respectful enough for price action that you are comfortable in waiting until that price action uh, confirms. For all you guys who are uh, brand new to the channel, if you'd like to learn pivots, right? Um, I, I discovered and... Uh, you know, I discovered and molded and all that good stuff and nurtured the PS60 theory, uh, my version of pivots uh, back in about 13 years. For the last 20, yeah, I've been trading about 24 going on my 25th year. For the last 13 years, I've been trading nothing but pivots. Uh, it's been an absolute, um, I think, game changer in my career. I think that's the best way of saying it. it's a very specific way and very patient way of trading. If you are interested and you've been watching this broadcast and you've been watching the feed and all that good stuff, 
come, you know, stop by for 30 days. Uh, it, the worst case scenario, you'll learn something different about price action. You could see if it's for you. Um, I think it's a very neat way of saying it. I think I share that echo uh, with a lot of traders in the webinar. And the most important part is it's a little bit of a different way uh, to look at the market. Guys, God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Hope to see a lot of you guys uh, in the webinar tomorrow. And the rest of you guys, I'll see you on the video. Take care. Have a great, great day.